Hi, my name is Lynn Eldridge and I'm the Executive Director of the Early Learning Coalition of Northwest Florida. We, as one of the things we do, we are responsible for administering the school readiness program as well as the voluntary pre-K program. And as a method for managing those funds, we actually do not complete any early childhood direct child care services ourselves. We work with private small businesses who choose to sign a contract with us. And while I emphasize private business, we want to talk about that. I have Susan Gage with me today. She is our provider support manager. She's also all about community outreach. So she very much is involved and engaged with the small business leader in a variety of ways. We serve seven different counties. So while she might be more comfortable or more at home in one county, she certainly works with child care providers, small business men and women in all seven counties and runs into many issues that directly impact the provider. As one of those issues Susan and I today need to speak with you about, uh, you have heard the term fraud. Well, you say, that's not me, pass that back to somebody else. I don't do that. And what we'd like to do is try to open up a different way of looking at fraud, or if you will, the perception of fraud. So you don't have to have committed fraud to be accused of fraud. I can't tell you how many parents call us, call you, Susan, yes. saying that their director of their child care asked them to do something mm -hmm. that just felt wrong to them. Absolutely. Enough, enough times that we feel like it's important to get in front of you and share at least three specific ways that people would perceive that you as a small business person were fraudulent. Now, Susan, one of the reasons I hesitate and have hesitated about going directly to that small business leader, that private child care owner and or director has been because it is their business. Mm -hmm. And while I, I don't want to come across as telling them how to run their business, the moment it changes is when they sign that contract to receive our funds. Right. According to the state of Florida, they have become then subrecipients. Mm -hmm. That means that you get the same funding we receive, but with that comes the same requirements. So without realizing it, when you sign a contract to accept the children who we send to you because their parents are eligible, you also accept the responsibility that comes along with that. When you fail to recognize that as part of your responsibility, Susan, that's when Thank people you. are perceiving they may be committing fraud. Fraud. So it, the yeah. perception of fraud. The perception of fraud. And it's not so much, like you said, that they're meaning to, to, to commit fraud or have that perception about them. It's just that in the past, maybe they didn't think that this was a business per se that had mm -hmm. that level of accountability. And with the, true. with the way things are changing at the state level and, and the new mandates yes. that are coming down, it is, you know, no more is this, these, these good people who are taking care of children is this is a small business that, yes. you know, receives funding from the state of Florida. So they're held accountable to all of those requirements where in the past they might've gotten away with maybe not turning something in on time or, right. yep. or just failing to turn something in entirely. You're exactly right. I, um, I think, I think we want to stop and, and reiterate what you just said. In the past, and we know that the, most people do not get into child care mm -hmm. because they want to be business people. Right. Much easier Including way. me. Yes. Yeah. More profitable. Yes, yeah. absolutely. 
you get into child care because you are drawn to the children. Mm -hmm. You know that you're happiest when you're with them or you needed a, a few extra dollars and you went to child care and you did not want to put your children in a mm -hmm. child care. So you started one. Sure. That's how it happens. I tell providers, child care providers, that they sort of fall into this business. Right. But in the state of Florida, when you accept taxpayer dollars, and that's what school readiness funds are, mm -hmm. it's a blend of state dollars that serve as match dollars to the federal government through the Child Care Development Block Grant in order for the state of Florida to draw down school readiness funds. With those funds come requirements that we have to hold you to. So, Susan, I don't think they sometimes see themselves as a business. Right, and which is a big misconception. You have a um, taxpayer ID number. Yes. You have, are required to carry insurance. You pay, um, you know, workman's comp. There, Absolutely. Everything that says Ab you're a business is in this child care business. Certainly so. in the state's folder, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. So to, to do anything else or to handle your business with us as less than business like would be inappropate. It's going set to hurt you. It's going to set you up for failure. Absolutely. We're having this conversation in 2015 because unfortunately, many of you who will hear this, you're also our friends, meaning we've worked with you for 20 years. Some of you 30. Uh, Susan, September, I will have worked with many of these same providers for 30 years. Wow. So for me to have to come in front of them and say, this won't work anymore. Right. Uh, that's why I have you here. Exactly. So you can help, <laughs> help them understand. <laughs> right. I'm not trying to get mean on them. It's very right. difficult for me to change my colors now mm -hmm. and say, no, I mean it. Mm -hmm. Get that paperwork in. But Susan, if I don't, mm -hmm. they will, they, they could very well lose the right to contract with us. Right. And I don't want to see that. And the state's not playing. They're not playing no. with us as a coalition when we get monitored, right. or they're not playing with the small business providers. You're right. Mm -hmm. I think across the board in the state of Florida, we are at a place of accountability, transparency, and return on investment. Mm. Big and key just phrases. Big key phrases. Yes. In our area alone, you, you might be a private child care provider and you say, I certainly don't get that kind of money from you. But in our area alone, $9.7 million, that's what state dollars flowed through us, state and federal dollars, came right through us. We sent it out to you based on your sign in and out sheets or that's their invoice to mm -hmm. us. We paid that out to child care providers, small businesses. Now, you go ask your chamber if your community receives $6 million from any organization, that would make you a pretty important business person, I'd be thinking. So you have to change your mindset. The state of Florida and the Early Learning Coalition of Northwest Florida, I recognize they are private Small business. It's their business. Absolutely. And if business is not your strong suit, you said it earlier, you know, a lot of people get involved in child care because they love children and children's what it's right. about. But if business isn't I your raised my hand yeah, to that. Yes, we, we, we know that about you. <laughs> um, then, then help, hire somebody. Who's, hire somebody. Who's, who's oh, my goodness. Temporary or yes. part-time, just come in for a few hours yes. a week. Because somebody who's, whose eye is on that detail allows you the freedom and the flexibility to focus on the children. Absolutely. Where you want to be focused. Yes. You know, Suze, you're right on the mark. We had a provider that had to pay back. Are you ready for this? $15,000. And you want to know why? I want to know why. They forgot to pay their insurance. Ooh. And they forgot Ooh. for an entire three months. Wow. So when we found out that they forgot to pay their insurance, mm -hmm. so it of course, was canceled, mm -hmm. that meant that they had defaulted on their contract their with us. That they signed. Yeah, so absolutely. we had no contract, and they had been receiving payment for children mm -hmm. for three months that mm -hmm. they had to pay back mm -hmm. to us. 
And that's that's one of those those little uh, bitty details that is so critical. Sure. Um, that you know when you're in in the middle of everything else, it, it's very easy to slip because it, it you know, insurance. I think not, I paid that. Right. You know, right. I don't know. But that particular thing that that insurance is one of those requirements that the state of Florida sure. requires Absolutely. that a school readiness or VPK provider carries. And the day that that insurance becomes the no day. longer valid, that contract is no longer valid. We have to provider. begin to move children. Absolutely. So from that point, mm -hmm. that we would have to begin to move children, mm -hmm. that meant no matter what, it's not our call anymore. Right. We would be calling parents and saying, we're sorry, your provider is no longer contracted with the Early Learning Coalition. Mm -hmm. Now, that doesn't mean we're calling parents and telling them to move. Mm -hmm. What we're t saying to them is it's your choice. Mm -hmm. If you choose to stay with this provider, you will be responsible to pay on your own. Mm -hmm. We cannot pay them because we don't have a contract with That's them. Right. So it, it has changed. The rules perhaps have not changed, but how the state of Florida is holding uh, that level of accountability, it it's definitely here. And it Providers have to line up mm -hmm. because there's nothing we can do to help you. It seems like that's, I'm saying that it's over and over. It's counterintuitive for you, nothing, isn't it? It yeah, is. Yeah, I, I don't yeah. like it. Oh, yeah. I, I have to tell you that the executive director for the Office of Early Learning, he is not from an education background. He is not from a child care background. Mm -hmm. He's not from a business background. His background is he is a lawyer and he has been an inspector general, general an auditor. Mm -hmm. And here's what he said. He visited our providers at mm -hmm. one of our meetings Visited? and he simply said, we look at you as small businessmen that we appreciate and respect, but we do expect a return on our investment. That caught me off guard. Return on investment. Mm -hmm. What does that mean? I'm with you. My background is children, not business. So when I talked to Susan, I said, return on investment. Help me understand that. And she shared with me, Susan, why don't you share what you I don't you know. Said? I think I kind of had to sit there and think for a minute. Return on investment. But it really simply means to me that the dollars that get put into something, we can show tangible outcomes on, on the other side of it. So me just getting up in front of legislators and saying, our providers really love children, right. doesn't work anymore. It doesn't work anymore. So the coalition has some innovative and wonderful strategies right. to show that the dollars that they do put into school readiness and VPK programs do produce Absolutely. positive gains and outcomes right. on the end yeah. for the children. I, I remember two years ago, Susan, it's been two years now, our board chair, John McFadder, yeah. was with me. We were in Tallahassee. We were actually asking the legislators for more funding for mm -hmm. school readiness because across the state of Florida, I think there's something like, I don't know, upwards of 100,000 children on wait list. Mm, a lot of kids. So we were asking for more funding. And one of the legislators said to us openly in a hearing, well, how do you demonstrate that the X amount of dollars, and they said whatever that was, it was huge, that the state's already giving you for school readiness? How can you say back to us that it's making a difference? Mm -hmm. How are you measuring that? There's 31 early learning coalitions across the state. Mm -hmm. We're just one of them. Right. None of us could come up with the same measurement across the board because we were all doing things Good so differently. Mm -hmm. We actually now have a way of measuring mm -hmm. success. That's another, we'll talk about we'll talk that a little later. later. Right. So what I want to do is I hope we've established you must change your mindset. Excellent. You are a business. We have to look at you as, as a business. Therefore, you have seen a change in how we serve you. We are forcing you to comply with the contract. Remember, the contract this year that you signed mm -hmm. with the Early Learning Coalition does not have Early Learning Coalition on it anywhere. It has statewide mm -hmm. school readiness contract 
Office of Early Learning. Therefore, you signed a contract through us, but with the Office of Early Learning, Department of Education, State of Florida. We are not able to add to or take away from your contract. Mm -hmm. So while I think a lot of things got left out of that contract that support children, I don't get to add those in and require you to do them. But on the same token, I also am not able to give you an additional five days to get your invoice in when the contract says you'll have it in by this date mm -hmm. or you will not get paid until the next open payment cycle. If it says it in your contract, we have to abide by it. Otherwise, Susan, we're in breach of contract. Absolutely. So and we can't do that. We can't do that. And that's probably one of the biggest changes that people yes. who have contracted with us in the past will say. They, um, you might be used to receiving really, um, really nice reminder emails or telephone calls saying something's fixing to expire in your contract file or you um, didn't do something right when you submitted your, mm -hmm. your provider's um, documentation for reimbursement for your services right. that you provided. Well, we're no longer able to do that. We have to abide by the terms in the contract and the contract is very explicit. And because it is so ex explicit, it's kind of held our hands, yes. tied us up to what we, we can't mm -hmm. do anymore. So, Susan, I want to stop you just sure, a second and sure. say, I really, in Tallahassee, argued that point mm -hmm. with the Office of Early Learning. And do you know what they said to me? What did they say? <laughs> they literally said, Lynn, we see the child care provider as business. Right. We would ask any other business to comply. If they're going to take the money, yeah. they have to follow the rules. Right. So right. what do I say then? Yeah, pretty much nothing. You say talk to Susan. Yeah, that's <laughs> it. You have to talk to Susan. <laughs> talk to Susan. That's exactly right. So right. Our, our biggest message right now right. is you've got to change your mindset. Mm -hmm. We can't bail you out. And many times in the past we have. Whether they knew it or not. Whether you knew it or not. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we bailed you out. We can't do that. You are a business owner. You sign the contract. Those requirements are yours. You receive the funding. You must abide by that contract. Now, with that being said, we're going to now talk you through three very specific areas that we've already found that has cost you money. And that is since July 1. Don't want to date this, but this is August 26th. And Susan told you she has to call a provider today to tell them that they are out of contract compliance. So a lot has occurred. We've seen a lot of uh, issues that are impacting these providers. Mm -hmm. The three main ones I see mm -hmm. is Submitting their reimbursement request. On time. On time. Mm -hmm. On time. On time. On time. Third business day, period. Close of business third yes, business Yes, that's day. five o'clock, not midnight. Mm -hmm. uh, whether we're open or not, remember there you have your own provider portal. Yeah. So you don't, we don't have to be open or be there for you to get your paperwork to us. You could have begun submitting your paperwork on the 30th or 31st, the end of the month, through your provider portal. We no longer accept you bringing your invoice in to us or your sign-in and out sheets in your attendance. So there's really no excuse. Also, the computer is dating when you submitted it. So there's really no argument. Your contract said it. We told you for six months it was coming. Ten providers. Yeah, about that. Ten providers. Mm -hmm. Two providers didn't get paid at all. Simply because they were late. Because they were late submitting mm -hmm. their attendance roster and their sign, all their... All their supporting documentation. Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, two, no pay. Now, they've already, you've already paid for, we were paying for July. Right. Two providers had already provided services for July, paid their staff whatever they needed to do, and yet they didn't get any pay because they did not get their paperwork in on time. And then the others did not get paid for certain 
pages mm -hmm. of their invoice because they neglected to sign at the bottom. Mm -hmm. And you say, that's not a big deal. It is to the state of Florida, it's Florida. a big deal. Right. We could not pay you. Right. Uh, so that invoice being in on time, number one. Mm -hmm. Number two. Invoice being in correctly. Okay. It's on time, but is it correct? Right. And that speaks to the seven or eight people that didn't get paid. They did submit the invoice. It was in the portal on time, right. but it wasn't correct. Right. They didn't check it. Right. And so we don't have, because providers have the ability to go back in and, and review everything that they've submitted, it is the responsible of the responsibility of the provider to do that. Our staff are not allowed to call them and say, okay, it's the second business day, but I noticed you didn't sign page two. Can you, right. can you resend page two? We won't let them do that anymore right. because the, really the control is in, in the hands of the provider. There's nothing that's preventing them from doing that. So that was probably the biggest bulk of this first reimbursement round. The, the issues that we faced was just they had it in on time. It just wasn't correct for varying reasons. Okay, so they ha are you hearing this? Because in the past, we know that we have called you, our staff have called you and said, you didn't submit this. Send it in now. Hurry. Hurry. They've reminded you about everything. Mm -hmm. We can no longer allow staff to contact the provider about what they submitted for payment. Right. It is considered their invoice. Mm -hmm. We accept it as it is. We pay based on what condition the invoice is in, what we can validate. Right. And sometimes that means they're not getting paid their full portion. Mm -hmm. In the past, we've also sent them a little update that says you didn't get paid for this many children because, and you didn't get paid for this because, you know, Susan, we did that for years, right. but I just looked at nine months worth. Mm -hmm. And what we found was that you continued not to provide the documentation for many of them up to nine months. We kept saying the same thing and it didn't change. What we realized is that we didn't hold you accountable. We fixed it. Right. You never even knew about it, but right. we fixed it. And that this, in the, again, bringing it back to the contract, because it's all going to come back to the contract. Yes, it is. There is one of the elements in there that says the provider is responsible for, for checking to make sure that the invoice that they submitted was paid correctly. Yes. And they have a time period now. They only have 60 days okay. once they receive that, that statement to make sure everything's right and get it straight with the right. coalition. Because they're a business, mm -hmm. and if you didn't get paid for something you felt like was owed you, then it's on you to go and check it out. Right. It's not on us to tell you about it. Right. So number one, getting your reimbursement or your attendance documentation in by that five o'clock on that third day mm -hmm. of the month, third day, into your provider portal, complete. So if you submit half of it on the third day and the other half not until later, then you're not, for whatever you did not submit, you won't get paid. It's until Where, that next billing. Until that next billing cycle. Mm -hmm. Then, Susan, you said that what they did submit mm -hmm. was not correct. Right. It was, was not complete. And in that completeness, uh, sign-in and out sheets are absolutely vital for you to have a method in place in your program that someone is checking to ensure that the parent is signing in and signing out because that's the only way we can pay you for that day for that child. You, you mentioned that real quick, and I just want to remind providers that on the website under the provider portal, or not the provider portal, but the provider tab, the provider school range provider handbook is, is posted there. there. Yes. And it lays out in explicit detail everything that is required in the time frames that they're required in. And how they have to do it. Absolutely. Too. So if you fail to put an you need to put an E for excuse, mm -hmm. but you put an A for absent. We're not changing that. It, we can't change your invoice. Mm -hmm. That's yours. Right. So therefore, you didn't get paid for that day because you did not adhere to how you needed to record that child's attendance at your, at your uh, program. In addition, if we cannot read mm -hmm. that Right. Um, that signature. We had an instance where the provider submitted 
um, everything was submitted correctly, but in the process of scanning, half of the page was cut off. And she didn't go back and in. And she did not go back in and look to make sure that all the pages came through. Um, we were not able to pay for anything that was on that page because it was not correct. So just a really simple two-minute check of what was submitted. I know it's annoying, it's a hassle, because you're trying right to- back to those yeah, business those little practices. Things. But that you know probably cost the provider a couple of thousands of dollars. Just so it would have been easier for them to just pay spend. someone <laughs> yeah. to take a look at. Yeah. If it's not their strong point, right. hire someone that it is their strong mm -hmm. point, hire an accountant. We've even suggested get several of you guys together and, and go talk to an accountant or a business in your community. Mm -hmm. The other thing that would make this so much easier is we've determined that if they would have electronic oh, yes. sign in and out, mm -hmm. it would probably eliminate 95% of the mistakes that are being made that cost you money. Yeah. The third reason that providers have got to change is that now their invoices are being looked at, not by us, mm -hmm. but by someone who doesn't know them, right. who doesn't know their heart for children, who doesn't know that their husband is in the hospital, who doesn't know the, the trauma that's in their life. They're just looking at this request for payment. Mm -hmm. And it looks like something is off. Mm -hmm or fraudulent, mm -hmm. it looks like something is fraudulent. For example, I'll be very specific here. I wanna to talk to you, the provider, the director specifically, on a sign in and out sheet where you have signed the child in and signed the child out over and over and over and over again and we ask you, where is the parent's signature? And you say, well, the parent keeps forgetting, so I sign them in. I have to tell you that gives the perception of fraud. Whether it's real or not, if the perception is there, please understand that we are required to investigate. Mm -hmm. I don't like that word, I can't help it. That is the word the state of Florida uses. Or whether the state of Florida investigates. Mm -hmm. I don't know, but it is an area that has been questioned. Another area, again, back to those sign in and out sheets, is where we cannot read a parent's signature. But it looks like a parent has been requested to sign several days worth of sign in and out on the same day. So it, it, there's no variation in the signature. It, it's not where it normally would be, it's not in between two other parents' signatures, mm -hmm. nothing like that. So there's no way of really saying whether the parent signed 10 pages of sign in and out sheets in mm -hmm. one day, mm -hmm. or whether uh, it's just one of those things that happen. Again, it's just the perception, right. and that's all it needs to be. And always signing in or out at the exact oh, same time. Oh my goodness. So a child always gets there at eight o'clock and always leaves at three. Well, what we heard when we asked about that, they said, well, we know that the bus comes at eight mm -hmm. and it comes again at three. So we have signed them out because the children are on a bus. Well, your handbook tells you exactly how to sign that sign in and out sheet if the child is leaving and coming on the bus. There's a specific way to sign. And your bus isn't always there at eight mm -hmm. and it doesn't always come at three. That's right. You're just, that's an easy General. way yeah. for you to record the time. Right. But that automatically breeds suspicion. So you have to look at that. And, and look at your handbook. So you say, you, whenever I hear you talk to providers, you're always saying, put on a different set of lenses. Yes. Look at it. So imagine what you're submitting being looked at by people who have these audit-minded or audit-framed lenses That's who they on. are. They're monitors you know, and auditors. They're looking for something that just right. doesn't look right. Right. You know? And like you said, we don't, they don't know how wonderful they are with children. They don't. Or everything that's they going don't. on. So they all they have to go through are, are the cold, hard facts that are sitting in front of them in the, right. in the form of a piece of paper. Yeah, and we've tried to look at it that way mm -hmm. in an effort to get the provider ready mm -hmm. because we don't want uh, Office of Early Learning to say, excuse me, you are no longer contracted. And when you lose your contract with the Office of Early Learning Department of Education, that's mm -hmm. who your funds flow through, right. 
you actually are out for five years. It's not like you can sit out for a few months and reapply. Mm -hmm. You are not eligible to provide services and be paid for through these funds for five years. So it's not quick in, quick out. It has heavy consequences. Right. Another issue that we have seen extensively is where you consistently have marked E, E, E on the last three days of the month and then the next month when we get that documentation, you have marked E, E, E the first three days of the month and on the fourth day of the new month, you have terminated that child. Now here is wow. why that looks really suspicious. Yeah, I can see that. Because you know, and we know, and the state knows, that typically when a child is leaving, you know it, and you know it ahead of time. What it appears you have done, perception, is that you also know you are able legally to claim three absences during the course of that month and still be paid for them because the state recognizes that children are sick sometimes or school functions or what have you. So they give you three days that they pay for and more days if you can provide documentation, documentation. but three days without specific documentation. What it looks like you just did was you knew the child was either leaving or gone and so you got paid for three days at the end of the month they were leaving in. You got paid for three days at the beginning of the month that you knew they were already gone. And then you terminated them on that fourth day. So basically you just got paid for six days and at $25 a day, if you had 10 children you did that with, that's, that's pretty big chunk of dollars Absolutely. change. Uh, but what it did is it caused the monitor, the auditor looking at your documentation, it caused them now to go back and look with a different eye. Look further, look harder. Look and further, look, look harder, yeah. look deeper. Yep. If this is, now it could have really happened, but I want you to know we have to call up that parent and see mm -hmm. when you knew that the child was leaving. And remember, providers also have a responsibility now to notify the coalition if a child hasn't been in attendance That's for exactly five days. That's exactly right. It's just mm -hmm. it, so much has changed. Yeah. So we encourage you. Remember, Susan is, she is the person you want to call if you have any kind of issues as a provider. Don't try to go to reimbursement staff or it, I have threatened them threaten them. Or really even the red line. The red line. Put Go it, through the red line. Writing. That's yeah. the better yeah, way to do is. it. Yes. Read your contract again. Read your contract monitoring tool. Mm -hmm. Both mm -hmm. of those are on our on website our, under the provider tab. Mm -hmm. You have access to them any time of the day. Mm -hmm. If you have questions, go through the red line. Please think about your business practices. It's not that we are saying in any shape, way, or form that we think you're being dishonest. What we are saying is we've had to wake up to perception. We know you. We've known you for years. But we're not the ones you need to be concerned about. This is business practices, and that's all it is, business. So please pay attention to how you are documenting, maintaining your records, you're required to maintain records for five years. It, it's just, you need to read that contract again because we cannot intervene. It's not our contract, it is the state of Florida's. And if so, I can add one please. thing, because you said print out your contract, print out your contract monitoring tool, and also print out your provider handbook. Yes. Have that handbook handy because whenever you contact the coalition and we give you a response, what we try That's to do true. is reference the contract, the monitoring, reference something that gives us the authority to be telling you that you have to do something that right. you might not have so thought good. you had to at, do. At, and Suze, in addition to what you're saying, you are right on the mark. We're not telling you where you went wrong anymore. We're not telling you, oh, you put three E's when we are telling you where to go back and read 
what the rule says mm -hmm. so that you learn how to go through these documents for yourself. It's a hard place to be in. It's a learning curve. Big learning curve. Hopefully you can jump on this and it not cost you. But I can tell you we have only one month underway and 10 providers who learned the hard way that it's a new day. You are business owners and expected to operate under business practices that any other business would have to do. If you have questions, go through the red line. It's easy to access. You have a 24 hour turnaround for a written response that you can hold up and feel comfortable that that is definitely the way it is. In addition, check into sharing with your, in your community, an accountant through several of you, or just by investing in electronic sign in and out, mm -hmm. what a difference it would make for you. What a difference. Thank you for all you do. Absolutely. I, I we hate to do it without we him. I know it sounds that, like we're doing a lot I know, of complaining now. We're right stepping now. Yeah. back and, yeah. and I, that's, the message seems almost it, it seems like you've got sweet and bitter water coming out of the same fountain. And right. I, I know that can't happen, but unfortunately here we know many of you love and care about these children and their families, and you have put your family on the line over and over again to care for these families. We've known that about you for years, which is why we've tried to make sure you got paid. The problem is we never taught you. We never stepped back and made you become responsible. We did it for you. And just like we find out too late that we have not done the best in raising our children because we didn't let them learn the hard messages we covered for them. I'm not in any way saying you're childlike, but I am saying we, we should have done better by helping you uh, be responsible. We thought we were helping you. Uh, only to find out that now it's time to grow up, both of us, and we have to do this different. We do need to be accountable without any question. We don't want the perception of fraud to be on you or on us. We can't, we can't, we have to be accountable. We have to be transparent, here's what it is. I, I, I am the first one to say, in the past we, would call. In the past, we would help. In the past, we, you don't have to say that. I'm saying it publicly. We've done it. We're transparent about that. We are also transparent is we have actually closed the book. It's not a new chapter, guys. This is a new book. You got to read the chapters. You've got to read the dedication. You need to read this book closer because you really will be the ones now who write the rest of it not us. Thank you for what you do. Uh, so it might sound so little, but I want you to get paid for every dime, every minute of what you do, if you can. It's never been enough, but now on top of that, you may not get what you actually earned just because you did not have sound, systematic business principles in place. We do need you, but even more than that, those children, that community, those families that have counted on you for all these years are counting on you to be big enough to make this change and open a new book. We still have time, we still have energy, and we still have each other to make this happen. So let's go together down this journey. For the children, we change their destiny. We just have to change ours a little bit too. Thanks a lot. Contact us either through our website at elcnwf.org, check us out on Facebook, or give us a call. We will be here to support you. Check it out.